put it on my phone, so just clap anyways. Uh, <laughs> my name is Maxi Glamour, and if you couldn't tell, I'm queer as fuck. And it feels great to say that in front of all of you. Living in this day and age, it's truly a blessing to be free with expressing our true identities. We owe that entirely to the amazing activists and leaders that brought and continue to bring equality to the community. It was the courage of the butch lesbians. It was the soft femmes, the black trans women, the butch queen in boots, the sex workers, the drag performers, the freaks, and even the basic gay boys that helped get us here. Getting the right to marriage was only a small step in the staircase of equality. Outside of St. Louis City and County, there were only three cities within the state that have anti-discrimination laws that pertain to gender identity. When it's still legal to discriminate against trans folk and employment and housing, we have to keep fighting. That's right. Yeah. The Delmar device still perpetuates centuries-old segregation within our cities. When queer black folk living in food deserts are stuck in this school to prison pipeline, we have to keep fighting. Yes. When neither the city, the state, or federal government recognize non-binary or third gender classifications, we have to keep fighting. Yes. Last year, Kiwi Herring was murdered by the police, and throughout the country, trans women of color are disproportionately killed. When it is a credible defense to kill members of our community because of gay panic, we have to what? Keep fighting! To get us here, our queer leaders had to keep fighting, even if the future looked meek. And it took more than those that were fighting for their own rights, but those that fought with nothing to gain. It's that white ally at a Black Lives Matter protest. It's that HIV negative person that's doing AIDS research. It's the cis gay bro that reiterates to their family that their friend uses they them pronouns. It's that natural born citizen that fights for immigration reform. It's that able bodied person that fights to have a business to be wheelchair accessible. It's that girl that never got detention that fights for prison reform. You see, it's those whose cards are stacked most against them that go unheard. When thinking how the cards are stacked, it's important to understand how many privileges that each and every one of us have. Diving further, we must also note that the stark differences for those whose cards are stacked worse against them. I always say I love my activism with a hot cup of intersectionality and forever mindful of how social categorizations like gender, class, race, and abilities apply to different groups. We have to be focused on building these that are affected most by oppression and discrimination and then we'll have a stronger state and country.